All right, we have a border crisis that literally is threatening to divide the United States. We are seeing the Democrat Party abuse certain groups of people as they try to remake their party across the nation. And to help me discuss some of these big topics is my friend, Ray Ross. Ray, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hey, what's going on, Stephen? Thank you for having me. So you are a Texas resident. You are also Correct. a veteran from serving our country. And you are studying these topics just as much as I am. So I wanted to get your take on this as somebody in Texas that's been studying this. Right now, we have a major crisis at the southern border. We have the federal government trying to tell military and border patrol to do one thing. We have Governor Abbott of Texas telling local National Guard, police, sheriff, and border people to do something different. How, where do you see this border crisis going? I think using certain terms like, you know, World War Three is kind of getting people to a point where it's going to be some sort of collapse here. Either the right legislation is going to be signed by the, the Biden administration or the people are going to really start taking charge and assist Governor Abbott. I believe there was 25 Republican states that stated they are supporting Governor Abbott and his decision. So with that being said, instead of a World War III, which I think nobody really wants, that's going to be really conflicted. There's been times and rumors of Texas stating that they want to succeed from the union, um, that they wanted to be their own republic, their own country, essentially. Um, so those things have been rumored, you know, came back around again. So I, I think it's important that we handle this very civilly um, without a lot of the rhetoric that we get from politics, essentially. So we, we really need to figure out a solution very quickly. Yeah. Um, you're down there in Texas. Are as, as you interact with people or go to dinner, are you hearing people talking about Texas should become its own country? Are you hearing people talking about the border or are you far enough north that it's not really affecting you and your family? Oh, no. Um, those conversations do occur. If I'm at a restaurant or anything like that out with my family, that conversation comes up more times than you know especially with illegal immigration. Not so much of Texas being independent of the U.S. I've heard that a couple times, but the illegal immigration conversation comes up almost every single time we're out. So it's a very popular topic in Texas, and people do not want the illegal immigrants inside of the country. No one is, is, no one is speaking negatively about legal immigration. It's the key word illegal immigration, which most people are focusing on. Yeah. Uh, is, is it your opinion that this is purposeful and by design, or do you think that this is uh, ju just happening? Is this, or is this Donald Trump's fault? I I've heard so many different people uh, give opinions. What What are your thoughts on the, I guess, the intention behind this crisis? The intention is purposeful. Joe Biden, when giving a, at a debate, I believe Politico was holding the debate, and on that debate, he was asked about reparations for Black Americans. The second, the very first thing he said is he had a time to think about this topic and that immigration is the most important topic of America and that Hispanics are the future. And I'm not speaking very divisive here, but they were stating how Hispanics are the future and we should deal with it because every single American will benefit from it, I'm paraphrasing. But that's essentially what he said. So his focus has always been immigration. Now, I don't, I don't believe the American people knew that it was going to be illegal immigration because when people say that they had these very, um, these, um, you know, conversations and arguments about, well, I don't think the president supports illegal immigration. And then we start talking about open border policies and none of these policies are named open border, but you can tell the loopholes and the gaps that it gives illegal immigrants to come inside the country. I'll just name one, the one that Obama signed into office, DACA. So that was one of the first loopholes created in the law to allow illegal immigrants to stay in the country. 
Yeah. Well, and, and when, when Biden talked about uh, immigration being the biggest thing uh, for the country, my thoughts immediately went to DACA. Okay, these are the dreamers. Right. These are the youth of America that are getting college degrees that want to assimilate into our society and become American. That's where my mind went. Never okay. in my mind did I ever think I would be talking about eight to 10 million people you know, coming across the border, 10,000 people a day in certain cities, and then everything that's going on in Chicago, New York, Baltimore, Boston, right. California, uh, it, it seems like it's all getting just a little bit out of control. E even the Democrat mayors of these sanctuary cities are saying, <laughs> stop, like you've got to, you've got to quit sending people our way. You know, um, that, that points something out towards me that I really want to share with you. Um, if you wouldn't mind, because I think this is important to point out. This is the um, this is the oversight committee. Can you see my screen? Yes. This is the oversight committee. And they were basically having a hearing about what Biden has allowed in this country. Biden administration's policies have few worst border crisis in U.S. history. And this is from oversight.house.gov. So this is the federal government basically putting Biden on trial. And, and his neglect. And then you say to something about Chicago. L look at this, Stephen. Governor Prisoner signs legislation further establishing Illinois at the most welcoming state in the nation. And I'm not going to read all of this, but it states legislation expanding protections for immigrants and refugee communities and further establish Illinois as the most welcoming state in the nation. If you go further into detail here, it states that this is for illegal and legal immigrants. Now, this was back in 2021, and here is current day. Um, back in 2022, it stated that now the governor wants Biden to direct migrants away from Illinois. You see how that turned around? So going back to your original question, yes, this was done on purpose. And it, it these are high crimes against humanity, in my opinion, being a, a U.S. citizen. It's high crimes because he planned this. Now he's acting like he wanna sign some bipartisan deal that's going to assist Americans. Well, I don't believe America was really listening to him, but I was, and this is the results of that. Yeah, um, wow, how about that? Um, it's kind of like uh, they say forgiveness is easy until you have to actually forgive somebody. Um, and then it's Absolutely. hard, it's like, hey, being a sanctuary city, it's really easy. We're the most inviting, immigrant-friendly city in all of America. Oh, wait, they're right. actually here? No, get them out of here. Get them out of here. Push them, push them into neighborhoods where we don't have to see them or or deal with them. And that's right. exactly that's exactly what we're seeing. I mean, look at New York, for example. They're taking the children out of school so that somebody from Venezuela or El Salvador or Honduras or China or Ganda, or South or India, India, you know, all over the world can sleep in your child's classroom. It, it's absolute insanity. I mean, the, the 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 lockdowns did enough damage to these children. Now you pull them out and put them back on digital learning again, so that somebody who shouldn't be in the country has a place to sleep. And I think one of the cities, or this one of the cities like Chicago has been experiencing that where they came into the black community, they pretty much um, evicted black folk from their community centers that they were using for computer labs and enriching their children. There are very few meager resources that some black communities have. They evicted them essentially, and then started to house, you know, migrants or whatever. And black citizens around the nation um, have been neglected for far too long. We should be addressing, you know, the needs of the people who are most in need in those neighborhoods, not further undermining them. That has been the problem. And it's due to an influx of illegal immigration that also poses competitive um, within the job markets, especially low skilled when it comes to the Hispanics throughout that, you know, where it be from Mexico down to the northern parts of South America. Then also in Asia with uh, Chinese as well as Indian folk and Haitians as well. So everybody is coming to America and they're seeking what? Asylum? No, no, this is about economic migration 
by the way of the Biden administration. And it's directly affecting black folk on a very large scale. Yeah. Um, I, I read, um, it was, I was just, just this morning, um, that, uh, let me pull this up here really quick. It says, uh, Oh, in Boston, they are, they're, they're pushing the illegal immigrants specifically into majority black neighborhoods. Uh, even though the people are infuriated, uh, they are saying we don't have anywhere else to put them. So they're now taking over their recreation centers, their YMCA, their after school programs. They're eliminating all of that for the community so that they have a place to to put people. How how long are Americans going to put up with this before they finally push back and go enough is enough? Or is that what we're seeing at the border right now? I believe that's what you're seeing at the border right now. And when it comes to cities like New York City, as well as Chicago, and as you named some others, it's getting to a point where I, I believe Black people in general, and not to uh, not to shout out Ron DeSantis, but this is the whole stop woke thing that they kind of transformed to something else. But Black people are waking up to a, to a point where they notice that Democrats are not doing anything significantly to help their conditions as they do other people. Like I've went into immigration on my channel many times about all the benefits that these people receive time and time again, why we have um, black people when it comes by population has the highest amount of homelessness, has the highest amount of unemployment, but yet we have millions and billions of dollars for foreign wars as well as illegal immigration. This is a straight undermining of the black community. Yeah. So we we just gave Ukraine 113 billion dollars. They want another 60 billion dollars. Wow. Um, but but they they can't help uh, struggling communities. But uh, hold up, Stephen. You made you made a good point there, sir. They're giving Ukraine hundreds of billions of dollars, and Ukraine is even stating they're not receiving the money. They're stating that it's going to special interest groups, that it's going to uh, corporate contractors. They're not even receiving the amount of money and aid and support that the Biden administration stated that they were receiving because they have all these contracts, all these special interest groups taking majority of the money for themselves, very large percentages. Yeah. So it's it's like it's a, it's a, it's a giant money laundering scheme that's Correct. going on over here while from the podium telling struggling communities, we've got no money for you. We no. don't have money for veterans. We don't have money for senior citizens. We don't have money for people on social security. We don't have money for the black community. We don't have money for the, you know, whatever it is on and on and on and on. It's like, they never have any money, but as soon as we need to bomb Iran, or we need to send money over to Ukraine, uh -oh. Everyone in Washington, D.C. jumps on the same train to get money to everybody but our own citizens. Correct. Unreal. Unreal. I can't agree with you more. So uh, another thing that I wanted to, to talk with you about um, is over on your show, um, you've talked about how uh, the Democrat Party has infiltrated black churches in order to gain access to the black vote. You've also uh, pointed out how Representative Clyburn of South Carolina, the man directly responsible for getting Biden elected, <laughs> has has sold out his people. Um, tell us tell us a little bit more about why you did those shows. I mean, for centuries. You know, the black church has been a pillar of strength and resiliency, providing hope and support to the black community. So there's a growing concern that some black church elders have lost touch with their roots and compromised their principles in favor of personal gain. And the way they do that is by black politicians, um, you know, uh, constructing a deal for a presidential candidate to come in and use the power of the pulpit in order to convince, influence, coerce, manipulate Black folk in their place of worship. I mean, it's unethical, it's immoral to go inside of a church house and speak nothing but politics. Well, you know, we're going to address your, your problems, you know, systemic issues and racism and 
uh, all the things that you guys been through, but we're not going to do anything for you, but we will promote ourselves um, politically here on your platform in the sanctuary where you guys pray to God. So again, there's no secret that several black church elders, you know, they live very extravagant lifestyles, residing in opulent mansions and driving luxury cars. So these politicians are paying these elders, they're paying these pastors in order to come to influence the people of the congregation because they live in those community and they know that that rhetoric will trickle down, that rhetoric will trickle down and influence the minds of that community. They know this. It's been working. Obama did it. A, a lot of uh, Bill Clinton did it. All of these politicians have done it and it has worked. Okay. It has worked. Even though you will call out all the racist things that Joe Biden has said or done in the past with the 1994 crime bill, also with uh, stating that, oh, stopping school integration, I'm not allowing my kids to go to some racial jungle. These are his words. So again, if people are not looking at these and they're now waking up, I believe that's a good thing. And when it comes to Jim Clyburn, he's the number one Sambo buck dancing Negro that I know. Because he's been in office. I think he's the oldest serving Democrat. Am I wrong? I might have to fact check that. I know he's been in a very long time. He's been in a very long time. And he's been garnishing votes from black folk for Democratic um, presidential candidates for quite some time. Because I know he had a, a, you know, a lot of power and leverage when he was the majority whip for the Democratic Party. Um, and now that he isn't, now he's now riding the coattails of Biden under the cape of Biden going to all these black churches. And the only thing that Jim Clyburn has done for his sixth district in South Carolina, the only thing that he has done is hold an annual fish fry, an annual fish fry so he can stay in office. Now, Stephen, let me tell you something about black folk. Um, we are very intelligent, um, but sometimes we can be, we can be too open to be manipulated sometimes. And I think that the older civil rights generations, those um, baby boomers and those late Gen Xers, they're the ones who are being manipulated the most. This Generation X and Generation Y, that, that sort of rhetoric and what these people have been doing for years to manipulate so they can have power and money, is gonna stop. Yeah, well, I wish I wish your friend Marcel Dixon uh, could take over Clyburn's seat. I've listened, you've had him on your show several times. Right. I think I've listened to two or three of those podcasts and he has some wonderful ideas that I think would absolutely change the game over there. But uh, people continue, it's hard, it's hard to vote an incumbent out. Um, and true. Uh, Clyburn has done a great job of, of staying in office, not necessarily doing a good job in office. Um, right. So, um, the, the, if, if people want to follow you, uh, continue to be updated, where is the, the best place for them to do that online? Uh, you can contact me on YouTube at black logic, as well as on Twitter at black logic zero. And those are the two major platforms okay. um, that I do most of my material. I do some TikTok here and there, but my two major platforms is YouTube and as well as tick, uh, excuse me, as well as Twitter. Okay. I'll make sure to put that down below. You, you bring a lot of data, a lot of facts uh, to your broadcasts. Um, you do a lot of research and I think people will appreciate that. Ray, you're a good friend. I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your thoughts on these topics. Um, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day.